I think this is this is the problem that touches um, a lot of cancer patients going through chemotherapy, and I think we can really help them uh, make that process a bit more bearable and less stressful and safer. When I was a kid, I was always saying that I wanted to cure cancer. That's a pretty big thing that I'm far from doing it. But I think with this small project, we can help people have a better quality of life, and that's really important. Hi, I'm Alvaro. I'm a second year here at MIT Sloan. And my name is Ola. I just graduated MIT in mechanical engineering. We are Leucolabs, and we are <laughs> developing the first non-invasive white blood cell counter. This is a picture of myself with my grandma in the last Christmas we spent together. A few weeks after this picture was taken, she was diagnosed with an aggressive type of stomach cancer. Before that, she used to be a really enthusiastic, energetic person that loved to spend time with us. Unfortunately, with the chemotherapy, that changed. She starts suffering from pain, fatigue, irritability. But what was really worse for her is that the doctors recommend her to reduce the time she spent with us. And they did this because her immune system, represented here with the white blood cell count, when from normal and safe levels to levels in which if she stayed for too long, she would be in a high risk of infection. Unfortunately, under the current standard of care, both patients and doctors live in the blind during the 21 days that the average chemotherapy cycle lasts. Because as it is right now, doctors can only know once per cycle, and this is before the next chemo dose, the white blood cell count of their patients. In this situation, the only thing they can do to reduce the risk of infection is to recommend lifestyle changes that are far from being ideal and that increases the stress and loneliness of the patient. And to put this into context, this is a massive problem. Only in the US next year, 650,000 people will start with chemotherapy. And of those, 75,000 will spend two to three weeks in the hospital recovering from this infection. And we at LUCO know that this shouldn't be this way. That's why we are creating LUCO, the first and only non-invasive device to count white blood cells that patients like my grandma can take home to daily control how they are reacting to the chemotherapy. What we are doing is we are empowering patients and doctors to take better and more informed decisions. Research and leading oncologists told us that if only they knew this information, they would be able to prescribe antibiotics to reduce the risk of infection during those days. But what is even more exciting, if only they knew this information, they would be able to personalize the chemotherapy and potentially achieve better outcomes. At the end, what we do at LUCO is improving the quality of life of patients like my grandma. So we started off by asking ourselves, why we can't achieve this with existing technology. For one, all solutions require a blood draw and a trained medical st staff member significantly li limiting the frequency of testing. With LUCO, no blood is necessary. There is an intuitive three-step process to take your measurement. We aim to make the process simple for the patient while we do the work behind the scenes. The device images microcapillaries in the skin above your nail, and this is the video that it records. These microvessels are so small that the white cells have to squeeze through one by one, and thus we observe them as gaps in between the red cells in the blood. Counting these gaps is what allows us to provide the patient with his or her white cell count. <laughs> This technology is based on over two years of lab research here at MIT and protected with a US patent. We have just uh, launched our first round of clinical testing with chemotherapy patients. And our goal is to, within 18 months, improve algorithms 
to reach FDA's requirement of 96% accuracy. For both our ongoing research and clinical trials, we are in close collaboration with leading oncologists. We are funded through research grants and have just a few weeks, received, uh, a few weeks ago received non-dilutive funding for another year of work. And most importantly, we already have a list of local hospitals and private clinics worldwide that have expressed interest to purchase Luca as soon as it is ready. And once it is, we will distribute Luca devices to hospitals who will then lend them to patients for the duration of treatment. Insurance companies will reimburse hospitals on a per patient basis. We create savings for both hospitals and insurance companies, making the technology affordable and accessible to the patient. And we have an amazing team with expertise on both the technical and business side of medical diagnostics to make this happen. Among the seven of us, we have co-founded startups, worked in biotech, and published in medical imaging. We have a supportive group of advisors with scientific mentors, regulatory consultants, and medical device industry experts. For us, chemotherapy is only the beginning. We want to start by helping patients like Alvaro's grandmother, and then grow beyond to assist the 10 million others who could benefit from monitoring their weakened immune system. And ultimately, Luca can be a diagnostic tool in every American household, just like the thermometer or a blood pressure monitor, allowing you to diagnose your loved ones when they get sick. And before I finish, I want to share one more thing with you. This is an email we received yesterday evening. It's from the dad of a three-year-old um, kid with leukemia who is about to drive his boy to the hospital because he got a fever in between two chemotherapy cycles. He's asking us for a device of Luca, even if it's not finished yet. And it's really stories like these that keep us going when we're dealing with the daily challenges of bringing Luca to market. If you want to help us, help Mason and others like him, come stop by our booth. We're Luca Labs, the only in-home white cell monitor.